So in this lesson, we're going to talk about filters some more, and this time we're going to go in some detail about ways you might use filters outside of the most basic use cases that we went over last time. From last time, we still have this my data object, which contains an array of these user objects. And then we're filtering against the name attribute and using the entire object to filter and then printing out the entire user objects. Refresh, and just to make sure this is working, looks like it's working normally. But let's say that we want to order these users by their age from lowest to highest. Well, how do we do that? When you are adding filters in a repeater, but this is true anywhere, there's a couple things to take into consideration. So the filter is applied to the array before something else parses it, in this case, the repeater. This filter is applied to the array before it's iterated through by a user. Obviously, so it doesn't have to iterate through all of the array objects that don't make it through the filter. So in the same way, we can chain filters to the same array, and you do it just like you would expect using another pipe operator. So if we want to order by the age of the user, we simply use the built-in filter order by, and then we pass it the string name of the attribute that we want to order by. Again, these pipe operators, the filters, are being applied before it's being passed to the user. In the same way, the filters are being applied sequentially. First, this filter is being applied, so it's matching against the name field. Then the resultant array is also then filtered by the order by. That way you don't have to order everything before removing them. To improve performance, these should be ordered as such. Let's make sure this is working. We refresh, these are in order, that looks good. And if we do Joe, that looks like it's ordered. And that's ordered, all right, that looks like it's working great. So another thing you can do, since let's just keep on piping these, is you can create limits to the number of results you have, as you might expect. And so that's accomplished with another built-in filter, which is called limit two. And you simply pass that an in integer. So here we'll just say two. And if we refresh, we see that we get the first two of any result that we search. And similarly, if we want the last two, append a negative in front of that integer. So we have this working. This is just an example of how you would chain filters in a repeater. You can chain filters anywhere. So you'd be able to chain lowercase to a date. The point is that filters are breaking out modules of filtering and they're able to be chained in order to maximize efficiency. So another thing that's worth mentioning on the topic of filters is that all the filters we've used have been inside the view. And it's actually possible to use a filter outside the view. Now, I haven't personally done this very often, but if you write a filter that has some use inside your controller, you absolutely are able to do that. As you'll notice, I've injected dollar filter here. So now we can use all the filters that exist in Angular, including the built-in ones. So we go filter, the name of the filter, the string name, which we'll just say uppercase, and then the argument. The only one we care about is the string, which we want to apply the uppercase filter to. So here we'll go, make this string uppercase. And so to check, we'll just long it. Refresh. We see the make this string uppercase is being printed to the console and it's actually uppercase. Using this in the controller, it's not an anti-pattern, but filters are generally built for consumption in the view. The types of things that they do are really relegated to the view. It's basically packaged data preparation. The syntax here is built to keep the view clean. This type of modification to the array can technically fall into the controller as well. But this is designed to be really clean looking, and these are designed to be reusable, and all filters are designed to be reusable for that matter. So if it makes sense to package the filter in a way that it can be cleanly used in the view, then I recommend doing that because that's what filters are really built for. But as shown here, there's nothing preventing you. If you have a filter that can also be used in the controller, if you inject dollar filter, you're able to use it there.
So this has just been an overview on some slightly more advanced topics involving Angular filters. And next we're going to get into actually building a filter of your own, since all the filters we've seen up to this point have been built in filters in Angular.